Hello and welcome to the Crypto Jungle. My name is Baloo and here on the channel, I teach you how to trade and invest in cryptocurrencies. If you're tired of all the YouTubers telling you to buy literally everything, we are a no hype channel. We are an honest and realistic channel that uh, just focuses on the charts using the Wyckoff method. So if that is something that interests you, then why don't you hit the subscribe button? I stream every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So in today's video, I want to talk about uh, this news. So you you know, this is not a news channel. We'll get that out of the way right now. And I can tell you that this is not new news, but it is kind of relevant news. And it has to do with the job posting that Apple created on their website that is looking for a uh, business developer with, uh, that specializes in alternative payments, uh, specifically noting the use of cryptocurrencies. So I want to talk about, or I want to speculate a little bit about that because uh, they have their their annual or not their annual they have some what is it called their their big uh, meeting that they have when they release new products and new informations and new developments that happen with Apple is happening today immediately after this stream is when that event will kick off so uh, I would like to tune into that and I would like to kind of look for further hints further clues as to whether it is a possibility that they could be including something like Bitcoin under the Apple Pay ecosystem the ability to custody a wallet the ability to buy and sell uh, Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies whatever the case may be, would be a huge, huge advancement uh, towards the development of this space. And uh, Apple doesn't do anything halfway. They make sure that their products are high quality products. And uh, yes, WWDC, what does that stand for? Worldwide Developer Conference, that's it. Thank you guys, you guys are awesome. Um, so yeah, we're gonna kind of dive into that and then take a look at the Bitcoin chart. Are we on support? Do we need to head to lower levels? What phase are we in? Uh, we'll take a look at all of that and more, but let's just talk about, uh, we'll just briefly show you the news article. So this is an article on Coinbase, basically just mirroring everything I just said. Apple's payment unit is looking for a crypto savvy business developing specialist to lead partnership efforts. Now. If I was to speculate on uh, on there being some sort of announcement, I think it's kind of unlikely to think that that's going to be announced today. Regardless, I'm going to be tuning in. I want to see what is going on with that uh, with that conference and look for any hints as to whether there is going to be some sort of integration with that. But more than likely, it's going to happen later on down the road because right now they're just filling the position for this business development manager so it's probably not going to be announced today but it might be announced soon and this brings me to another point that i want to quickly discuss before we dive into the charts i will just go over to a chart here and i want to talk about buy the rumor sell the news um buy the rumors, sell the news. What that's referring to is when you hear a hot tip or the market is, is thinking about some sort of hot tip or they are experienced or they are confident in a decision based on a company or something like that, people will buy into that rumor and then the savvy investors usually sell into the release of, that, of the news of that rumor. So uh, the most recent example of that that we had was actually Doge. So uh, if we go over to a Doge chart, the buy the rumors, sell the news event was uh, basically Elon Musk going to be shilling Dogecoin when he went on Saturday Night Live. Now, basically, we started to sell off into that event as a lot of the more savvy investors knew that this would be more or less a non-event. And uh, what ended up happening is you had a big rally going into that event. And that's usually how these things play out because when there's common knowledge inside of an ecosystem, you're going to price that in. You're going to price it in. So what's interesting though, is it might actually be different in the case of Apple because Apple is very protective uh, a, they're very protective of information and it's very hard to get a leak from them. They do occur, but it's typically harder to get a leak. Um, and secondly, there are so many users that are unaware of this potential even occurring. You know, in cryptocurrency, if we see anything crypto, you know, we're like, oh my God, Apple's gonna do this or, or like so-and-so is gonna do that because they're looking for somebody to help develop in the blockchain space. And we get really excited because we're plugged into it. now. 
in the case of uh, Saturday Night Live and Elon Musk, you know, it was such a nonchalant comment, it didn't really get anybody excited. So there was no increase in the demand characteristics for Dogecoin as a result of that event. However, if Apple releases news where they're going to integrate uh, Bitcoin payments or cryptocurrency custody inside of the Apple Pay wallet, that's going to be a huge, huge driver of demand because now all of the uh, Apple Pay wallet users who may have been on the fence about crypto or maybe just didn't understand it or thought it was a scam, all of a sudden, if Apple's doing it and it's on Apple Pay and they can just get it with their phone and they can custody those funds inside of their Apple Pay wallet on their phone, that's going to be an exponential uh, factor of growth. And I think that that would be probably, if it happens this cycle, that would be basically the blow off top. That would increase uh, the demand for that asset so much that we would go into the parabolic phase of the crypto cycles that uh, we compare uh, all of these cycles to, that final kind of uh, push to the upside. So we'll have to tune in and see if we get any uh, clues to that. But uh, a lot of bullishness inside of the space overall. You know, the Miami uh, Bitcoin conference uh, got a lot of buzz. We, you know, FTX bought a freaking arena. They bought the Miami Heat arena. There's a lot of fundamentally bullish news on the marketing side of cryptocurrency. It's kind of being forced into the eyes of the general public. So I think the demand is present. I think that, the, you know, even though the market has had a bit of a shakeout, I, I think that the demand is very much so present. So let's go ahead and take a look at Bitcoin on the daily. Uh, we've been analyzing this trading range down in this area to try and find if we are uh, landing on support. You know, if we take a look at the volume, you can see that the volume is diminishing. So the supply is diminishing. However, that also means that demand is diminishing as well. But since we're landing on a level of support and the supply is uh, contracting, then that's telling me that the sell pressure is getting less and less. So we'll have to see how this kind of plays out. If we go over to the weekly chart, I actually kind of like these candles. You know, we got two dojis. Dojis are kind of indecision candle. A lot of the market was really scared. We got some huge sell off candles on the weekly. And then we got two doji candles that closed. Uh, we just got our new doji candle closed here. Uh, and they have a lot of buying pressure or not buying pressure. There's a lot of selling pressure, but usually when you're, this is kind of a, con eh, a turnaround formation where you have these long wicks on top and a, and a continuation to the upside. We'll have to see how this plays out. You know, we, this is a brand new week. It's a brand new candle. So we'll have to see how that develops. But overall, I'm leaning to the bullish side. I think that we are getting to that point where support is being, uh, developed enough for us to kind of start to begin entertaining the idea of maybe taking some trades. You know, a lot of the trade setups have been shaky and not for the newer investor. But uh, if you do know what you're doing, I mean, you're already trading because you're you're being a little bit more aggressive. So let's go down to the four hour and let's see what this trading range looks like. Now, I'm waiting for a secondary test in phase B. Now that is on the uh, bottom of this main trading range. So we have our seller's climax here, our automatic reaction, our automatic rally, sorry, up here, and our secondary test down here. So I'm trying to see if we're going to come down for our secondary test in uh, phase B, but uh, there is also the potential. Now I, I try to keep my trading ranges horizontal as long as possible, but I do like to entertain more bullish ideas. There is the possibility that we have an upsloping trading range just slightly. So if that is the case, if we do have an upsloping uh, area here, we could be resting on top of the on top of the bottom of the trading range now. The ca a caveat to that is usually when you test a support level or a resistance level, you get volume. Now this area, no volume. So we need to be very careful in jumping to any sort of conclusion there because we don't really have uh, a volume signature confirming that the market thinks that that is support. Oftentimes when you're looking for support and resistance, check the volume look at the volume because it's going to get, it's basically going to tell you that you're seeing the same thing that the market is seeing don't try and get sneaky with the market don't try and trade against the market and try and find some sort of bullish indicator that the market isn't seeing trade with the trend trade with the market if the market sees an area of support identify that area of support with the market um, so as far as a support level 
a little shaky. We're going to have to see how that kind of pans out. Let's take a look at the RSI real quick. RSI not giving us much, you know, we're still kind of, uh, we're below the 50. I would like to see us get above the 50. That's kind of the bullish control zone. We are technically in the bullish control zone, anything above 40, but it's always gonna be slower when you're between the 40 and the 50 mark. So we'll have to see how that kind of pans out as well. Let me see what we got in the chat here. Okay, um, so if selling pressure is diminished, does that mean that we are not going to have uh, ST in phase B? I, I think we, I think it's still on the table. We can very much so come back down to this level and get our secondary test in phase B. I would like to see us get that secondary test in phase B, but at this point, you know, you have to be flexible. You have to, you have to move with the market as it's moving. So if we, if it gets to the point where you feel like you're you're missing the move, then you can become a participant on any swing low that's perceived to be an LPS. Um, a lot of people trying to predict a spring too, don't try and predict things that aren't there. We have to interpret the candles as they're printed in real time. A lot of people think that TA is a tool to predict the future. It's just a way to analyze the exact moment. It's a way to analyze the present. And if you're in a bullish trend making higher lows, you are presently in a bullish trend and you may want to position yourself alongside that trend. Okay, so 35.8 still holding. Yes, I think, uh, you know, even if there is a new trend line here, we could come down to 3,500 even and still be in a good trend. Uh, would you bring your skills to CHSB, please, Blue? Uh, it's at the base of a rising channel of its ETH pair on the daily. So I would like you to tell me if I'm thinking along the right lines. So the Ethereum pair, when you're in those alternative currency pairs, you need to kind of be careful. Uh, Ethereum is kind of getting to the point where there might be a lot of market participants uh, watching it, but very much to the point that I made earlier, be on the side of the market, you know, analyze alongside the market. What is the percentage of market participants that are analyzing the charts in US dollars? What is the percentage of market participants that are analyzing the chart in Bitcoin? And what is the percentage of market participants that are analyzing the chart in Ethereum? Now you can trade those pairs. It's because if you're bullish Ethereum and you want to hold Ethereum, trade the Ethereum pair, but you just need to be really simple and just take a look at the trend. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and see what you got here. So it's Ethereum, uh, CHSB ETH. CHS E. Is that right? Where is it? CHSB. Swiss Borg, Ethereum. So when you're trading these pairs, uh, start out on the daily, zoom out. Uh, macro potential uptrend, but uh, you know, the local trend is down. So you want to invalidate that. You know, if this is kind of the generalized up sloping area of support that's fine but when you go down into the four hour or heck even the eight hour what's the local trend the local trend is a downtrend so until we break the downtrend there's no reason to sell your ethereum to buy swiss Borg. there's no reason for it we're kind of flattening out right now but until you break out some of these highs and get a new high and a higher low until you're in this higher high higher low structure that is it with these pairs okay don't do wyckoff trading ranges don't draw triangles don't do any of that crap just the trend only the trend because there aren't enough market participants looking at this chart to find those clear clean support levels so if your goal is more ethereum then you just uh go with the trend buy anytime we're at a, a swing low buy anytime at a swing low carry your stop close keep it at break even if you can get your stop at break even it's the exact same as just hodling ethereum so uh, that's how I approach these alternative currency charts. US dollar has the most set of eyes on it. So you're going to get the, the cleanest uh, setups on those pairs. 
Okay. Another Dogecoin bullshitter. <laughs> I uh, do not like Doge as a project. However, uh, $5 I don't think is outside of the realm of possibility. Realize that the blockchain space is a very misunderstood space. And when you're in a misunderstood sector, it's very hard to place value. Most of the market is speculative. And if speculators don't understand the fundamentals, that's how you get a five, $10 doge. It's ridiculous, it makes no fucking sense. It is, you know, I'll reserve the rest of my harsh words on that, but the reality is if people don't understand what is valuable and they're placing their money on the line and they're willing to buy something, you can mark up the price. So, you know, I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility. I didn't think it was in the realm of possibility to see Doge at a dollar, so I'm not going to discount the possibility for Doge at five. Uh, doesn't Wyckoff accumulation pattern look like an upward sloping trend initially? Uh, no, no. Usually, you know, you have your your seller's climax, automatic rally, secondary test, and you want to always analyze any new trading range as horizontal initially. If the triangle reaches the apex, does that mean that selling pressure has to be lifted? No, when you have a, when you have something reach a triangle, uh, when you have a squeeze, the thing about a squeeze is it's a decision point. It's an inflection point in the market where the traders need to make up their mind. Are we going up or are we going down? That's all a squeeze is. Now, if you reach the end of an apex and it's on low volume, which you know is kind of concerning with what we're seeing on Bitcoin because the volume is decreasing. Um, if we get to the end of an apex and there's no volume, it just means there's less supply, less supply, less supply, but there's still no demand. The demand has to carry us bullish out of that apex. If we don't get a break to the bull side, it's just going to break down because people are going to capitulate because they're not going to allow themselves to hold on to that trade anymore. So you get an influx in supply in the spot markets. So uh, a squeeze is just the point at which we make a decision and that's it. What do I think about the upcoming death cross? Well, it's a moving average crossing a moving average. Moving averages are old information. They are based on the price candles printing and there's no fundamental reason that uh, they cause the price to crash other than traders thinking that it causes the price to crash. Moving averages to me are a tool to identify trend. So while the moving averages are pointing down, indicating a downtrend, there's no guarantee that a death cross causes the market to be over. I, I really, me personally, I don't subscribe to that. I look at the trend in the price candles itself. If we have a trend that continues to the upside, which on the macro, we made a higher low. On the macro, on Bitcoin, like if this was our last macro low, we still made a higher low. So until that is broken, I'm not bullish. Uh, or sorry, I'm not bearish. I, I, we are in a strong local downtrend and there is caution that we need to make. We need to be very aware of this level right here. So if we do break up, uh, it's not bullish for me yet because we're gonna encounter some supply in this area. But a death cross, a moving average, me personally, I don't trade that way. You know, every single trading strategy is just that. It's a strategy. So if there are traders using these death crosses as a strategy, that's fine. Go ahead and use it as a strategy, but it's not a guarantee. There's never an ever, and there's never an always. And that's the only absolute in trading. Oh, that's an interesting question. So is there a method to assigning fair value price to a crypto like Ethereum? For stocks, for example, you can look at uh, the profits, etc. cetera. So uh, that's, that's a nice, uh, that's a very good question. And uh, I'll show you the models that we use currently. And it's, and it's some of the on-chain data. So basically there's a couple different ways that you can assign value. When we're talking about a network, like a blockchain, you know, when if the internet had a stock, you know, the internet's stock value would be associated on how many people are using the internet. So with that thesis in mind, 
the value of a cryptocurrency or the value of a network is its adoption. So how many people are using the network? When we use Bitcoin, we have, you know, you can take a look at the total addresses. We have an increase in the total addresses, more and more users coming online. You can also do the amount of transaction value as well. Uh, that's the NVT, NVT ratio, or is it signal? So yeah, as the transaction value increases, as we see more and more transactions on the network, you can associate that with value. How you do that into a dollar for dollar amount is not nearly as clear as stocks, but we're in a very new market. This is a brand new, this is, this is a new frontier. So there's going to be new ways to kind of associate value with this. So there is no kind of dollar for dollar uh, way to associate value. All you can do is look at network adoption. And if the network is continuing to be adopted, then you can just theorize that the value of the network is is worth more and more. But we're still very volatile. We're going to become oversold. We're going to become overbought. And uh, we're at the stage of price discovery. This is an asset that we don't know what it's worth, period. End of story. We don't know what this asset class is worth. And that's why it's so crazy. That's why it's so speculative. That's why people are either all in or all out because we just can't figure out what this stuff is worth for the most part the only metric that we have that helps is the adoption of the network um, so if you go to a, 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 a website like glassnode you can look at the bitcoin nvt we can go over and take a look at ethereum as well nvt ratio of ethereum it's actually it was quite busy uh in 2017 was that 2017? It's actually been declining. What is this? Transaction value. Yeah, so it's not nearly as much adoption as Bitcoin, uh, but I think that'll change. Ethereum is becoming bigger and bigger and bigger in terms of its ability to, uh, to add value to the world. So uh, we'll have to see. But that's basically all we got. Like, there's no earnings reports. There's there's none of that stuff that helps us uh, discern value. Uh, 2017 had many small death crosses. So I think the traditional death cross is the simple moving average, the 50 crossing the 200 on the daily. That's your traditional death cross. Let's actually turn it on. Why not? Let's take a look at this death cross. Like, I don't even use them. So MA. Uh, moving average, moving average. And we'll do the 50. Crossing the 200. Okay, so I actually didn't realize how far apart these were. So this is this is nowhere near close. Like we can turn the 50. You can turn the 50 at this point. Yeah, it's got a nice trajectory, but we could absolutely turn that 50. We're we're not even close to being scared about that just yet. Uh, if it crosses, there will probably be some sort of volatility event. But honestly, it's it's pretty far away. I actually expected it to be like right about to cross or something if we start pumping that'll just you know invalidate now what would cause a pump i don't know maybe apple maybe apple saying hey we got uh, crypto in our apple pay wallet i don't know it's kind of interesting to speculate on the narrative sometimes but uh yeah i'm not really not worried about that death cross at all there's been an over 400 percent spike in uh BTC USD shorts on Bitfinex since yesterday. Do you think it's a reason for concern? Uh, there's always going to be a exchange that is bearish. There's always going to be people that, uh, let's actually go take a look at some of the open interest. So for those who don't know about this website, this is coming from another YouTuber, Crown's Crypto Cave, fantastic YouTuber. Go check him out. Really entertaining and solid analysis. He uses a lot of indicators, which I don't, but you know, he was, uh, 
he's he's a good analyst um so app.crowntrading.net we can take a look at the price versus open interest and uh, i like to look at the open interest so the open interest is actually increasing a little bit here so what does that mean that means more people are getting into leveraged positions more people are opening up positions based on margin um, and that's kind of the fuel to the fire so if a lot of people go long here and uh and we break down you know we'll melt down however if a lot of people are going short and they're wrong that's rocket fuel that just sends you straight up because there's force to do market buy as their liquidations kick in so let them go short as far as i'm concerned if we're at a support and we continue to head to the upside you're gonna exactly the same thing as when we crash you start to melt up because those shorts become liquidated so everybody thinks we're gonna go down to lower levels let them think that let them add fuel to the fire let that open interest to the short side build and then let them be wrong because it'll just freaking just head straight up so uh that is a, a possibility as well fear and greed still kind of hovering around that 30 to 15 uh mark i don't even know if that's a percent or what that's just a uh, one in a 100 i guess uh bitcoin dominance right at around where are we right around 40% again. So we're heading back down. Altcoins are doing uh, better in the short term. Let's actually take a look at Bitcoin dominance. Yeah, so we're, we're heading down. I've got a, a trend line here that I've marked just to kind of know when the trend is, is back up again. This may turn into some sort of a squeeze. As soon as we break above this trend line, we'll pro the traders will think it's time to go back into Bitcoin. So this chart, by the way, just measures which asset class is doing better. Are altcoins outperforming Bitcoin or is Bitcoin outperforming altcoins? That's all that's going on here. Uh, we may come back down to 40%, which would mean that the alts can continue to rally. The rallies aren't really strong in US dollar value, but a lot of the Bitcoin charts are showing uh, stronger uh, strength. They're, they're showing more strength when, with their Bitcoin comparatives, uh, but we'll see how that kind of plays out. You can also draw a line on the RSI and wait for a break there as well. So we'll see what breaks on the Bitcoin dominance chart. Use EMA, not MA. I don't really care about any of them, honestly. The only moving average that I've found to be somewhat successful is... Uh, our moving average that we have in the uh, in uh, the private group here. So if we go and turn on alpha new metrics, the at any point where this uh, green wave was active, we'll actually go down to the four hour. So every time eh, every time price dipped into the green wave and gave you a green triangle. That's your signal to go long. So boom, 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 boom. And then every time you get a red uh, triangle, that's your signal to sell profits. Selling profits at the top here, selling profits at the top there. And then at the point that the wave turns red, it's time to really think about heading to the short side. So as far as our custom indicator is concerned, thank you, Matt, for bringing this to our group. Um, as far as our custom indicator is concerned, we are in a bear trend. So, And that bear trend was called and confirmed at $57,000. So if you were following this indicator directly, move for move, you'd be sitting in cash and you'd probably be short right now and you'd be pretty darn happy because you got a $20,000 short. Um, but yeah. Moving averages have their place, but I don't base decisions on uh, us crashing as a result of a moving average. A moving average can show you health, a moving average can show you trend, but one moving average crossing another for me is not enough information. You can trade them if you want, but that's not what I'm basing this on. So when we break down, maybe, but uh, for right now, it's not something that I'm too interested in. And if you guys are interested in getting your hands on the Alpha Numetrics indicator, this comes with any of our memberships. So we may as well talk about 